Dialed in. They are now at the right temperature for launch. Countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 15 seconds. Up next, GLS fires up the KPUs. Those are high speed turbines which provide pressure to hydraulic pumps that steer the RS 25s. Stands for Core Stage Auxiliary Power Unit Start. GLS is go for Core Stage APU Start. That now leads to the thrust vector control test at T minus two minutes and 30 seconds. That can proceed now, and we will see the engine's gimbal at the bottom of the core stage. At T minus three minutes and 10 seconds, you will hear the go for purge sequence four. That's a helium purge of the four core stage engines downstream of the propellant valve, getting the air and moisture out. GLS is go for purge sequence four. And in just a few seconds, GLS will close the core stage locks vent, liquid oxygen, the white vapor cloud caused from the super cold gaseous oxygen condensing the water in the atmosphere will disappear. You see it coming out there now. And there it goes, it's closed. Locks vent closed, Woo! pressure rising in the four stage lock tank to flight levels. Coming up in 15 seconds, look for that thrust vector control actuator test. Engines will gimbal. No. <laughs> We'll know when it goes. <laughs> and there they go. Four core stage RS-25 engines gimbling around, testing the ability to steer the rocket into space. They will operate at 109% performance. Each RS-25 throwing down a half million pounds of thrust. All four, two million pounds. All together with the boosters, 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. GLS is good for upper stage to internal power. Now the upper stage has gone to internal power. Woo! So power is removed from the rocket's <laughs> upper stage, the ICPS, and it's been switched to battery power. The same milestone is coming up for the core stage at T minus one minute and 30 seconds. All right. You can say 90, 89, <laughs> 88. GLS is go for core stage to internal power. The rocket's core stage, which houses the three flight computers, is now on battery power. So there is no more hold time available because there's no more margin on the battery. So if we hold, have a hold, we we'd have to recycle back to T minus 10 minutes and recharge those batteries. The count continues. <laughs> A note now, shortly after liftoff. One minute. Shortly after liftoff, Mission Control Houston will take control of the rocket, and my colleague, Leah Cheshire, will take over commentary. T minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up at T minus 33 seconds, the GLS will hand off control to the ALS. This is the autonomous launch sequencer. On board the rocket, it will take over command and control of the rocket but the ALS will check, make sure there's no holds coming from the ground up until T minus two GLS is go for ALS. And we are go for ALS. The Space Launch System is now counting down to lift off of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. 22. Launch team can no longer recycle the count. Sound suppressor water now flowing 15. under the ML. 15. And here we go. Hydrogen burn off igniters initiate. Seven, six, five, four, three, three, two, time, one. Oh, look at the moon.
major milestone will be for the solid rocket boosters to cut off and jettison at about 2 minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, so about 30 seconds from now. Again, quiet here in Mission Control Houston as teams continue monitoring the flight of Artemis 1. We're now 16 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center, traveling over 2,800 miles per hour. <laughs> Standing by for solid rocket booster jettison and shortly thereafter. Oh, that's so cool. miles downrange. <laughs> Two minutes and 36 seconds into the flight. Well, no. Hearing nominal calls here in Mission Control Houston. <laughs> We've still got four good engines on the core stage. Next up, we'll be looking for the service module fairing to separate. This is three 15 by 15 foot fairing panels, providing structural support, protecting the service module. Those will separate at about three minutes and 11 seconds into flight, and very shortly thereafter will be followed by the launch abort system separation. Just over three minutes into the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 4,060 miles per hour, 83 miles downrange. We just had confirmation that the service module fairing has separated. And that the launch abort system pyros have fired, separating those from Orion as well. just heard the call for three engine press, meaning if SLS were to lose an engine at this point in the mission, we could still achieve a nominal mission. We would just have an extended main engine cutoff time. However, we still have four good engines, all at maximum thrust range. Woo! seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. So far we've had a clean ascent. We saw those solid rocket boosters jettison about 2 minutes and 11 seconds after liftoff. Shortly after we had the service module panels fairings separate as well as the launch abort system. The launch abort system was inert for this flight except to perform this separation. Those four core stage engines will continue to fire and power the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 6,800 miles per hour, 229 miles downrange. Booster flight controller reports that the engines are looking good. seconds into the flight, 7,656 7, miles per hour. That's cool. Again, four good core stage engines, those four RS-25 engines. The last time those core stage engines flew, they were taking space shuttles to orbit. Yep. Now with upgraded capabilities, they're launching the future of human spaceflight. Two seconds into the mission, we are now traveling 8,800 miles per hour, 345 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. Again, we are anticipating core stage main engine cutoff at about 8 minutes and 3 seconds. And about 10 seconds later, we'll see core stage separation, at which point mm -hmm. Orion and the interim cryogenic propulsion stage will be flying free. Now traveling over 10,000 miles per hour, 6 minutes and 15 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1, 427 miles downrange. Quiet here on the loops in Mission Control Houston. Teams continue to monitor this first flight. About a 
minute and a half now until that core stage main engine cutoff time. Our four core stage engines continue to fire maximum thrust.